Dr. Buckberg, welcome to what we are now calling Afterwards. This is a, a chance, viewers, by the way, for you to see what we didn't get a chance to cover on our PBS show, but yet we wanted to make sure you got a chance to be able to hear more from what the doctor has to say. And I want to introduce you again, Dr. Gerald Buckberg. You are one of the great heart surgeon and researchers to our time right now. I'm sorry, you're, you're modest, I, I know that, but I'm gonna let the people know that. And yet at the same time, what I found fascinating about reading your book, Solving the Mysteries of Heart Disease, was that you yourself had a heart issue that even led to a little bit of a stroke. And when I started reading that, I said, this is something that I wanna share with my viewers because mm -hmm. you got through that in a way that I think many people are suffering. Uh, people who suffer from heart failure in particular, they all of a sudden get this very sense of their own m mortality, you can't help that, but it's a depression that sets in. And I know it's set in with you, and I wanna discuss that so we can share with our viewers how they can possibly, or at least some of the things that they can do to help get them through those rough periods. Well, I don't think I could speak to what other viewers could do or other people with strokes can do but, or depression can do, but it, it's, it's a devastating illness and it uh, essentially um, takes you away from the world and you lose literally everything. And basically, you have this terrible concern only about yourself and don't think about anything else. And so you refocus your, your knowledge about yourself and it's... it's, it's very demeaning and and horrible because you don't think you can get anything done when i got when i had i had atrial fibrillation and then i had a stroke uh because i i by the way interestingly enough didn't understand about how long you take a blood thinning medicine for because the surgeons were not aware of what the cardiologist knew and so i stopped taking the medicine when my heart beat normally but i really had to stop for no i had to keep it keep the anticoagulants going for a while to so make sure the atrium is squeezing. <clears throat> so I had a stroke and it, it lost my recent memory and it was a devastating uh, experience for me. I, I lost a patient in the operating room and because and, uh, uh, somebody told me I could operate but there's a problem there. And I um, literally had to give everything up. I gave up my NIH grant or, or put it on hold. I stopped my trips. I, uh, I stopped my editing of journals. I did a whole stop. I had to get rid of my fellows or put them in another place because I couldn't function. And I was literally without, without any way to help myself. And, and, I, and I kept on wondering how you do this. And I began to read about it. And there's a wonderful book by William Styron called Darkness Visible. It's a little skinny book like that. And, and he said that the people who get better are creative people. Not people who do things, but people that are creative. I said, well, maybe I have a chance with that. At the time I read that, I read another book, which was really intriguing, uh, called um, uh, Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. Oh, I had, I had Mitch and, on my show. I and, know that. And I realized that in front of me were two individuals. One who lost his brain and had a good body. Another who lost his body and had a good brain. Intriguing look at, at how it was. So I, um, I uh, uh, read this and I wasn't sure what I'd do and I had canceled a whole variety of things. And I was supposed to go over, I had 15 trips internationally because I do a lot of traveling. And I was supposed to go to Argentina and I was going to cancel the trip to Argentina. And I sat on my lawn one day and I said to myself, you're afraid if you go to Argentina, you're going to be stupid and ignorant. I said, the way to find out if you're stupid and ignorant is become stupid and ignorant. Don't sit there and say you're scared. Lose. And I said, baloney, I'm going to go. So I went to Argentina and I uh, had the incredible experience there because... Um, I was invited to a, uh, to a small city, Mendoza, and there were the young surgeons from Argentina were there uh, to use my techniques in fixing the heart. 
and uh, and they asked me if I'd scrub in. Of course, I couldn't scrub in, but I just said no. I'd watch. And so the surgeon did the operation, and when he did the operation, the heart wouldn't come off the heart lung machine. It looked like it was dead. It looked awful. And I, I looked and I said, oh my God, that's terrible. So everybody said, well, you have to give these drugs and all that stuff. I said, no. I said, you protected the heart perfectly. You didn't do the operation right. And they said, they said what do you mean? I said, you, you, these graphs are wrong. Change them. Put them back on the heart lung machine and do it again. And 10 guys said no. But the chief surgeon said, I'm listening to Jerry. So he gave my stuff again. The heart was perfect. It did well. So that, that made me, made me uh, um, you know, feel a little better about myself because I was in Argentina. And I um, went there and uh, I started thinking about heart failure. And I suddenly had a dream of where heart failure could be. And I met with two people, one from, uh, one from Buenos Aires and the other, no, not Buenos Aires, from, from Rio de Janeiro, the other one from Sao Paulo. They're friends of mine, and I went over a whole um, a whole area of new thinking that I just thought up. I just sat there and thought it up, and they said that's interesting. But they don't do anything. They just shake their head and drink their wine. They don't listen. So I got on a plane, and I went home from that plane, and I was in a, a cabin, and I lit the light, and for 17 hours I wrote 70 pages worth of new things about how to treat heart failure. And I cured my my depression because I found me. Oh, Doc. So if there is advice out there, A, seek within the creative yes. mind. Right. And, but the answer that was was finding me. Exactly. So you found yourself exactly. by doing that. Yeah, by being creative. Exactly. And that cured me like that. Now, you're right, you can't say that that's going to happen to everyone, but no. viewers, please listen to that carefully. When you are, I mean, really, when you're thinking about yourself in this great depression, and, and, and I would think a heart attack or a st anything like that, any major mm -hmm. illness, any major, a job loss could put you in that kind of right. funk. Be creative, and as you say, you have to really find your own way of being creative. In your case, it was natural for you to think of the heart. In some other case, it may be whatever your job is. Maybe it's not even your job. Maybe it's your hobby. So really, you can access your own inner creativity to help your emotional being? Uh, right. I think the, the person you have to love most in the world is yourself. If you love yourself, you're going to be fine.